Hi there, I'm Kim, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Families cut off as India blocks communications on its side of Kashmir. We catch up with this year's newly crowned Miss England and I promise she's not your average beauty queen. Loads of followers but struggling to make friends. New research reveals the loneliest generation. And thirsty for saving water? This monkey has a message for you. A communications blackout in the India-administered part of Kashmir is making it near impossible for family members living on the Pakistani side to get any news of their loved ones. The internet has been cut, there's no mobile coverage, even landline phones aren't working. India revoked Kashmir's special status on Monday, taking what little autonomy it had and sending the region into lockdown. And for the families separated by the line of control, it's terrifying. मैं परेशान हूँ कि उनके साथ कुछ भी हो सके। पूरी को यानी कि आप सीधी सीधी बात है भारत कुचलना चाहता है इस तरीके नौजवानों को मारना चाहता है इसका नोटिस लिया जाए दुनिया को चाहिए वो इसका नोटिस ले इंसानी जानों को बचाए। Well, let's have a whip around now of a few things that caught our eye on social media. First up, a photo showing two mounted white police officers leading a handcuffed black man through the streets with a rope has sparked outrage online. The photo was taken in Galveston in the US and was spotted by the man's sister-in-law. She was understandably furious and says her brother-in-law is homeless and mentally ill. Police apologized but said the practice is acceptable in some cases, although they are now planning to scrap it altogether. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Team Mitch boys pictured here groping and choking a cut out of Democrat Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are nothing to do with him. Ocasio-Cortez called out McConnell on Twitter about the photo, asking whether McConnell pays young men to practice this sort of behavior or whether it's just the standard culture of his supporters. The caption of the photo, originally posted to Instagram, was, break me off a piece of that. Ugh. Now, why people film themselves doing illegal things really is anyone's guess, but it came back to bite this guy in Spain who dumped an old refrigerator off the side of a cliff. The video, which featured the guy's license plate number, went viral. Police got wind of it and ordered the man to retrieve the fridge, which police then filmed to make a wee video of their own scene here. The dude has been ordered to pay a $50,000 fine and was fired from his job a domestic appliance distribution company. Now, when you think beauty pageant, what comes to mind? Glitz, glamour, maybe an awkward I want to save the world speech or two? Well, how about doctor or genius? 23-year-old Basha Mukherjee is both of those things, a doctor and a genius, and is now also being crowned Miss England. We caught up with her.
well, it took me a year and a half really to really agree to this because it was in the middle of my medical school journey and it was in the middle of my finals this year. But uh, I went, to, uh, I went, I decided to go ahead with it and here we are now. It is just a number for me, it doesn't define me uh, because at the end of the day, what I've chosen to do with my life is dedicated to people and the service of mankind, which is uh, in medicine. So I'm really grateful that at least, uh, you know, my interest in academics um, has paid off. And actually, I can turn that genius IQ of mine to something good and something doing something good for society. of a pageant, for me at least a national pageant like Miss England, gave me the opportunity to essentially reach out to more people. In today's day and age, it's the day of social media and in social media platforms, that's where you find the most young people. And young people are interested in glamour and beauty and fashion. And we really need to reach out to them. And I found pageants to be the perfect platform where I could actually be heard and be listened to by both groups of people. Good luck to you, Asha. Really, really lovely girl. Now, the chances are you know somebody who spends all day on their phone. Perhaps it's you. Well, this habit is actually affecting mental health. That's according to a new report. The group most susceptible to these mental health concerns are millennials, depressed and lonelier than ever. Nick Davies-Jones really did have his head in his hands when he filed this report. The University of Pennsylvania looked at the causes of lonely feelings. It found links between social media use and decreased well-being. Far too many of you are ignoring the world and focusing on your screens. About 3 in 10 or 31% of Americans say they find it difficult to make new friends. More concerning, another 27% do not want to make friends while 26% say they don't have any hobbies that can make them new friends. Researchers define loneliness as perceived social isolation. More and more Western Europeans and North Americans are living in solo households. Many choose to live alone, but many also do so following a divorce or spouse's death. Isolation is also increasing in other ways, with fewer people joining activity groups or sports teams. So what does all this isolation, or in millennial terms, surfing the web on your phone while drinking an iced vanilla mocha while curling your hair or stroking your hipster beard really mean? Simply, an early death. Studies linked loneliness to an increase in heart attacks, strokes, cancers, eating disorders, drug abuse, sleep deprivation, depression, alcoholism and anxiety. Being a loner also means you're more likely to suffer from cognitive decline and a quicker onset of Alzheimer's disease. So time to terminate your self-imposed stupidity and go change up your lives and do something before a depression kicks in. Hey, you asked me to pump you up a little bit about your depressions. I'm very happy that you snapped out of it and that now you're pumping up other people that have depressions and encourage them and give them positive reinforcement. I love that. Hasta la vista. Arnie bringing me advice there. Hmm. Okay, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Wednesday. Why political campaigners in the States are only just cottoning on to the idea of text messages is anyone's guess, but in any case, prepare to get a lot more notifications if you're living in the States come 2020. Researchers have found texts from political groups encouraging people to vote have a much better response rate than emails. Wow, surprising. Now, technically, voters who were texted were only 1% more likely to vote than those who didn't, but 1% can make a difference. Former Harry Potter star turned badass women's rights campaigner Emma Watson has teamed up with Time's Up and the organization Rights of Women to launch a free legal advice hotline for women being sexually harassed at work. 
The Time's Up UK Justice and Equality Fund was launched last year by entertainment industry peeps for projects just like this. The helpline will advise women on their rights when they've experienced sexual harassment and how they can exercise those rights. As many as one in every two women, yes, that's half, experience sexual harassment at work. A group of YouTubers have created a union of sorts. It's not the election holding workers' rights bargaining kind, but they are backed by the EU's largest trade union. The group is demanding YouTube create a fairer system for new YouTubers to get the money for their work. Right now, the big stars of the platform end up getting the biggest brand deals because YouTube allows advertisers to control what content their ads appear next to. So surprise, surprise, they choose the big names and channels. Fairtube, as the group is known, mostly just want YouTube to be transparent about the rules that affect the monetization of videos. This next story is no joke, I promise. A tiny animal described as a caterpillar crossed with a teddy bear may have taken up residence on the moon. The microscopic tardigrade, just a millimeter long, is meant to be the most resilient creature known to man. They can be frozen for decades and then a thaw out and, and continue as if nothing had happened. But how did they get to the moon? Well, they were included in a time capsule of sorts, sent to the moon on board a privately funded Israeli lunar lander back in 2018. Now, the lander crashed, but its designer thinks the capsule may still be out there, and if the tiny tardy grades are good at one thing, it's survival. Much-loved author and Nobel laureate Toni Morrison has died aged 88. Tributes are pouring in for the writer, whose work was described by the Swedish Academy as characterised by visionary force and poetic import, giving life to an essential aspect of American reality for her exploration of black identity and experience. I have a little uh, framed document in my bathroom, a letter from... I think Texas Bureau of Corrections saying that paradise was banned from the prison because it might incite a riot. And I thought, how powerful is that? <laughs> I could tear up the whole place. You don't think you will ever change and write books that incorporate white, white lives into them substantially? I have done. Mm. In, In a substantial paradise. way. You can't understand how powerfully racist that question is, can you? Because you could never ask a white author, when are you going to write about black people? And finally, everyone's favorite newsfeed segment, Animals Doing Stuff. This guy may have water scarcity on his mind. The former election chief of India rather posted the video with the caption, what a beautiful message for humans. Has a drink, then turns off the tap like a real good monkey. That's it from Newsfeed. To reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints and suggestions at Kim Vanell. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. Make sure you to subscribe to our channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Follow, subscribe and add and we'll see you tomorrow.